So we're here at Dublin Castle as the results are coming in for the family and care referendums. The final result has not come in yet, but it looks like a devastating defeat for the government with some of these constituencies reporting 75% no uh, by some tallies. Uh, I, I'm wondering if I could get your reaction to that initially and, and what you think of the result. Yeah, this is a really significant result uh, in historical terms, in terms of referendums, and it's a really positive result as well. What it means is that the people have rejected these two uh, amendments, and they have rejected the government uh, in relation to this. These amendments, if passed, would have created major problems into the future. I have no doubt that there would have had to be another referendum to fix the problem. I have no doubt that it would have led to a steady stream of individuals being forced to go to the courts to achieve justice for themselves, paying tens of thousands of euros to solicitors uh, in the meantime uh, as well. And I think there are serious questions to be asked of the government now. How is it that the political bubble gets it so wrong? Why are they not listening to the people in this country? You know, there's a kind of a political peer pressure in Leinster House that the group think people, the politicians are so scared to stand out of line in terms of these issues. Like this was a David versus Goliath campaign for AIN2. AIN2 was the only political party that campaigned for a no vote uh, in relation to this. I think the serious questions in terms of the opposition political parties as well, it's quite clear in my view that increasingly Sinn Féin are becoming marooned from uh, their uh, voters. Uh, working class areas especially voted very strongly uh, on a no vote uh, in relation to this. And you know, if the leadership of Sinn Féin and the Labour Party and other political parties keep ignoring the people, they will learn very quickly what the people think of them uh, in relation sh to this too. I think there's major questions though for Roderick O'Gorman. Roderick O'Gorman was asked continuously what kind of advice did he have from senior legal advisors in the government. He said that uh, he had the advice that Durable relationships were very clearly understood and would be understood by the courts and that it would not lead to an increase of litigation into the future. Two, uh, uh, two days ago, the day before the, the referendum, it was leaked uh, that the Attorney General's uh, advice to Roger Gorman and all of the other ministers very clearly chimed with exactly what we in AIM2 was saying. That this idea of a durable relationship would not be properly understood by the courts and would lead to significant litigation into the future, causing major problems in terms of uh, s uh, social welfare, uh, taxation, succession, immigration and family law. So it is an incredible situation that you have senior ministers misleading the Irish people. We in to have no confidence in Roger O'Gorman as a result of this, and I think there are serious questions for him to answer now. I think that uh, emotional confidence is called for in the minister at the moment. My worry is that the other opposition political parties Sinn Féin, uh, the Labour Party, People Before Profit, uh, Sock Dems, for example, they're all very much wedged into this groupthink as well. And as a result, they're very unlikely to hold uh, the minister to account. But I can tell you, AIM2 will be holding the minister to account for this and will be ho holding the government to account. And one final thing on this, in, in my view, is it's really, really important now that this government cease their virtue signalling on this issue, that they stop spending millions of euros of taxpayers' money on meaningless uh, you know, marketing hollow husks of referendums such as this and they actually start to deliver on the bread and butter issues that the people want them to deliver on and that's what's missing here you know for so many families who are struggling to get home care uh, help for their for, for their families struggling to get nursing homes struggling to get respite you know we have minister roger gorman and this government who are putting children into state care that's unregulated those children are going missing uh, at the moment and that's where the government needs to start focusing on its work